Today I'll show you how to use ESP32 and ESP Now to control and dim your LEDs wirelessly, instantly, and in real time. I'm using a potentiometer to allow me to smoothly adjust the brightness of my LED strip in real time and wirelessly. This gives me a lot more control, kind of like uh, a knob for a, a volume knob for a stereo. You can also use this with motors to control motor speed. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Today we'll be using three push buttons, a 9 volt power supply, uh, power connectors, some breadboard jumper wires, four ESP32 S3 boards, one for the transmitter, three for the receivers, one MOSFET module for each receiver, and a DC motor with a propeller. If you saw the previous video, the ESP32 wireless prop controller for Halloween, where I used LEDs instead of props, they were 12 volt LEDs. I, uh, I wirelessly controlled them on and off. I used this controller here, but as you can see, it's very busy. So we're going to get rid of all these buttons. These are breadboard buttons. They're very nice and very convenient for breadboard use, but we want something a little less busy and give us room for other components. So we're going to remove this, and I'm happy to do so. We're going to use two pin push buttons. I'll show you that in just a second. Get rid of that. Look how nice and clean that is. All right, we are going to use just a basic two-pin push button. It's real smooth. I do like these breadboard buttons because they're very uh, tacky and clicky, but uh, it's very smooth. And we'll use an internal input pull-up resistor in the code, and we won't actually need a physical resistor at all. So let's go ahead and put this on the board. Attach that to our ground rail. Attach this one to pin 2. Same button connection that we had before. Do that one to the ground rail. This one to pin 41. And then I got a third, and you can buy these on Amazon or eBay or wherever you buy your electronics. And it's pretty nice because you can you can buy them already soldered. The wires already soldered onto the pins, and then the shrink tubing over that, which is pretty nice. So you don't have to do that yourself. And then the next one will be pin 39. Now the pins I used here are safe, but you do want to avoid pins that are used at boot because they have special functions and it can affect your startup. So whatever model you're using for ESP32, check that data sheet. The next thing I'm going to do is use a 10K resistor, as you can see, maybe, 10K, and this will fit right in into the breadboard here, so that's what we'll do. Put this right into the breadboard. First, I want to make these connections. I want to run it to pin 2, or sorry, pin 4. This resistor has three pins. The one on the left here is the 3.3 volt pin. The one in the middle is the wiper pin. That'll be pin four. And that sends a variable voltage to the ESP32. And then the one on the right is the ground. So let's go ahead and put it in the board here and connect it. I'm gonna connect them before I, uh, I put that in, just because it's easier. All right, so this will be my middle pin connected to pin four. This will be my ground pin. Actually, I want a bigger ground pin. That way it's not stretched so much. All right. Ground pin will be right there. And then my 3.3 volt pin. And I'll just attach it from up here. like that. Some, sometimes these breadboards, it's tough to get the pin in there. There we go. And let's move my other stuff to the side here. All right. I'll just line that up with the holes. Push down. And you want to push it straight or you can bend it pretty easy. And you got to be careful not to bend it because you can bend it. And if you bend it too much, you'll break it off. So, yeah, don't do that. So there you go. 
So it's a lot cleaner than what we had before. And now we'll be able to dim our lights with with our potentiometer here. And 10K works really well with uh, most of your Arduino and the SP32 projects. So we'll use 10K. Now that you've had a good look at the board, the next step is to load the code. And if you are on the email list, you will get this code in an email along with any diagrams that I use in videos going forward. So it's just a convenient way to share that with everybody that's interested. All right, so let's switch over to the code here. Here's the code we'll be using for the transmitter or our controller. And uh, this, this right here is our MAC address for each individual receiver board. And yours probably won't be these exact uh, addresses. So I shared with you in the previous video a uh, code that you could run to get the MAC address of each of your boards. So refer to that previous video. I will share this in the description of this video. But uh, yeah, you want to get your own MAC address for each one of your buttons and each one of your boards for this to work correctly. Uh, down here we have our three buttons, uh, 2, 41, 39, and our potentiometer on pin 4. Down here we have our uh, internal pull-up. Instead of using a physical resistor, we use the uh, internal pull-ups. And everything's pretty much laid out straightforward in the transmitter code. Here are the same three receivers I used in the previous video. It's basically 12-volt uh, LEDs. 12 volt power supply, those are connected to the MOSFET module. The trigger pin of the MOSFET module is connected to pin 13 of the ESP32. And then there's a common ground connected between the module and the, uh, the ESP32 board. Here is the diagram for this setup, and it's the same for all three receiver boards. In the previous video, the data that we sent over ESP now was just a Boolean value that set the pin either high or low. It was literally just a switch to turn the LEDs on or off. Now in this video, we're not just switching on and off, we're controlling power level using PWM. Now I'm running PWM at 20 kilohertz, and it's completely silent for both LEDs and small motors. Now that we've looked at the code, let's go ahead and see it in action. Now the LEDs are on the other side of the room here. Obviously they could be further away. I'm just going to press a button, and as you can see, I can control them individually. If I have just one on, I can control the dimmer with just that one that's lit up. But if I have all three on, the dimmer will control all three at the same time. And it appears that there's a fly in here. It's driving me insane. Now, if you are experiencing brownouts or your receiver is resetting, rebooting, you can add a large capacitor to the power rail and keep your wires short. That would help. Now let's take this setup and use it in a different way. So far I've only been using 12 volt LEDs, so if you want to change to another voltage and control something that has a different voltage, this particular MOSFET it can control anything between 5 and 36 volts. So in order to change that out, all we have to do is remove the 12 volt LED. I'm going to use a, a DC motor. It's a small DC motor. It is a 3 to 12 volt motor. I'm going to run it at 9 volts just so that I can show you that I'm going to change the voltage. And all you need to do is change the power supply coming in to the MOSFET. And then, of course, you attach the 9 volt for us, the 9 volt motor on the other side. That's all you need to do. You don't need to change anything with the header on the MOSFET that connects to the ESP32. That all remains the same. Here we go. I've removed the uh, 12 volt LED and I've replaced it with this DC motor that I'm going to, to run at 9 volts. And I did say you need to change your power supply, so we're going to switch it from 12 volt to 9 volt. And I'm using one of those power supplies that you can kind of dial in the voltage. It can handle up to about 1.2 amps. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here on the other side of the MOSFET on the uh, voltage in. And I'm going to power up the ESP32. Now for my transmitter, nothing has changed. I still have all the buttons intact and I have the potentiometer here that I'm going to speed up and slow down the, the motor. We'll focus over here on the motor. I'll do a split screen here so you can see what I'm doing. Now I can press the button here, power it on just like I did the LEDs and that was 12 volt this is 6 volt or 9 volt sorry so I powered it on and I can use a potentiometer to slow it down 
and speed it up. I can slow it down so much that I turn it off. And I can turn it back on that way as well. And that's with the same 10k ohm resistor potentiometer. And then I can use the button here to turn it off. And then I can connect all three of my buttons to a different uh, receiver, a different motor, and just like I did the LED strips. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it by clicking the thumbs up. Also, check out my other videos if you enjoy this type of stuff. Share it with somebody else who may find it useful. And I'll see you again with another video.